Joining us tonight is representative of 64A and current candidate for governor of Minnesota. Everyone, welcome Aaron Murphy. <laughs> Joining us, thank you, uh, and I'm sure that you are very busy on the campaign. So uh, this is definitely a treat for all of us. Uh, so uh, I kind of want to go. I know you're running for governor, and I want to get to that. But I want to go back to before you were even in elected office. You were and continue to be a nurse and a nursing instructor at St. Kate's. Um, so Woo! it seems as though. There are some uh, St. Kate's in the audience. Katie's. Uh, Katie's. Katie. Okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, everyone was granted sainthood upon admission. Uh, but uh, so, did you decide that healthcare was such a relaxing field that you wanted to get into the even more relaxing field of uh, state politics? So, what 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 was the, your journey to to becoming an elected official? So I uh, grew up in a family that loved politics. Uh, uh, the very few. <laughs> yeah. And I do. Um, and it is a powerful tool um, that we use to build our future. And I chose nursing because I care about people and I'm in politics for the very same reason. But it was really the experience of taking care of my mom at the end of her life. And my mom and dad had worked hard and earned their way and built uh, a good life and had good health care coverage, and when my mom was diagnosed with cancer, she had to fight with the insurance companies to get the care she needed, and it frankly pissed me off, right? And, uh, yeah. 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 Well, welcome. Uh, so, uh, you've represented uh, District 64A in St. Paul since 2006. Um, why are you seeking the governor's office right now? Um, do you just see how other female candidates are being treated and thought, you know what, that seems fun? <laughs> uh, I want to build our future. And in Minnesota, uh, our politics largely works. Uh, but we are moving in a direction like Washington, D.C., where all we're thinking about is how to win the next election or how to beat the other side. And what's getting lost in that is us and our future, and we've got some challenges. And I believe with the people of Minnesota that we can tackle them, and we should. Uh, and that's why I'm running, because I believe we can build a bright future for everybody in the state of Minnesota, and I want to do that with the people of Minnesota. Great. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned some challenges. Uh, what, are, what are some of the challenges that, as governor, you would, you would focus on? So when I think about Minnesota, uh, we have an aging population, uh, and we have workforce shortages all over the state of Minnesota. Uh, and that's going to get harder as people leave the workforce, something we've known about for a long time. We'll have people who leave the workforce and are probably going to need health care all over the state of Minnesota in sparsely populated areas of the state. We've got to figure that part out. In Minnesota, uh, where we pride ourselves in being at the top of all sorts of lists, we are the second most unequal state when it comes to racial disparities. And that should not be a point of pride for us, and it's something that I believe that we should tackle. We should fix it and make sure that people have the right, right, full opportunity, full measure opportunity. So when I think about ahead of us, some challenges, and I know we have it in us uh, to do that. That's great. Um, and so before you get there, you do have to be elected, and right now you are running uh, for the DFL endorsement against some other candidates, including uh, Tim Walls and Rebecca Otto, um, both who in their campaigns tout their support in uh, Greater Minnesota. Uh, you represent a district in the Twin Cities that went 75% for Hillary Clinton in 2016. Do you think you would be able to gain support in Greater Minnesota? I already have. I have strong support in Greater Minnesota. So I've been in office for 12 years. I spent the last 12 years with the people of Minnesota all over the state. There was someone who said to me when I ran the first time, and I was not going to endorse, I love to door knock. I said, John, I love politics. I love to door knock. Um, behind every door is a story. And I have door knocked literally all over the state of Minnesota, helping other people, other women, get elected. And a woman said to me, if you get elected the first time, she said, remember, your job is to represent the whole state. And I've taken that to heart and spent my time on people's doorsteps, in the garages, in the kitchens, uh, I've been in farm fields and forests and mines and hospitals and clinics and schools. Where Minnesotans are, I have been there. Um, I've gotten to know them, and I've earned the support of lots of people across the state of Minnesota. Delegates who are going to go to that convention 
more than 60 elected officials all over the state of Minnesota because people know that I'm going to continue to show up and fight for them, and that's what they're looking for. And that looking for my victory. Looking for so, uh, you've been all over the state. Uh, do you feel like the state is uh, united, or do you think it's divided? I think Minnesotans share a lot of common values. Uh, and when we talk about that, and we talk about a vision for the people of Minnesota, uh, and we earn their support because we have a plan for our future, uh, Minnesotans come together around that. And honestly, I think that is the magic to winning an election. Uh, but there are forces that serve to divide us, and they serve to divide us because they're interested in the status quo. You know, the Koch brothers like politics just as much as I do, but they're not in it for the same reason as Still I Still a family, though. <laughs> family that likes politics. <laughs> That's right. But they're interested in protecting what they have, right? Their position, uh, their status, their political and their corporate power, uh, and fossil fuels. And so they're going to use their power um, to try and to divide us, and that is why they spend so much money in our elections right here in the state of Minnesota. Uh, and I think we have to counter that with a message about our future, a hopeful message about our future and a practical sense of what we can get done together. And I have found, as I have campaigned now for 12 years, that Minnesotans are hopeful people, they are practical people, and they want to make progress. Um, they're not interested in the kind of politics that divides us. And I know we spent an earlier part of this show talking about Tim Pawlenty, and he is already laying down the kind of messages that serve to divide Minnesotans based on where we're from based on our gender, um, and we can't tolerate that. I won't tolerate that, and we cannot let him win, because um, he will divide the state once again and use it as a platform for him, for himself, to run for another office while leaving us behind, just like he did the last time. And I'll just say one more thing about Tim Plenty, because this is important. Please do, it sounds juicy. That's what you said in the earlier episode. You know, I served uh, when he was elected. Mm -hmm. And he was the governor when, and when I was first elected. And of the Democratic field, I'm the only one who actually stood up to him and beat him. And I'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah. In what sense? Because I don't think he was running for your district, and maybe you had an arm wrestling match at some point. But like, what, <laughs> what, what was the so in, in what context? He uh, he line item vetoed funding for something called general assistance medical care. General assistance medical Sounds care. Sounds like something totally unnecessary. Yeah, uh, there are very poor people who were very chronically sick, um, and he uh, thought it cost too much money, so he just cut all the funding. And I said, and it was in my second term, so I was kind of new and said to the Speaker of the House at the time, Margaret Anderson Kelleher, I'd like to fix that. And she said, go ahead. And we did. Um, we put another proposal on his desk. He vetoed the second one. Um, and I got a really big vote. 124 of 134 of the members of the House of Representatives supported that first bill, tried to override it, and the Republicans wouldn't join me in the override. So I had to go in and negotiate with them. And we got that funded. And you know why? Because Minnesotans said, Minnesotans said, yeah, you're damned right. Those people, those sick Minnesotans should get care. And they stood up with us, and we beat Tim Pawlenty, and I'm going to do it again. Yeah! Yeah. 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 said you're damned right? You sure it's not your darned right? <laughs> Just can't imagine that many Minnesotans choosing to swear and not stubbing their toes simultaneously. So, I mean, you do, uh, if, uh, if it, you do gain the uh, DFL nomination, you will have uh, to face uh, Tim Valenti and or any of the field of the Republican challengers. Do you feel uh, that the Republican Party or your or just Tim Pawlenty are serving to divide the state. There are, uh, it, as in 2016, it was a very close uh, presidential election, um, almost even split uh, between the percentage that voted for Clinton and Trump. So um, you talk about uniting, how do you unite those people who would have uh, voted for Trump or uh, would support Republicans normally? So I think we talk about the things we share in common. I think we talk about uh, a really a strong vision about what what it, what we can do to build a future for the people of Minnesota. I know there are people, and it's not just in Greater Minnesota. People who feel like they're left behind in a really great economy. I think they think the economy is rigged, and I think there's a lot of evidence of that. There are a lot of people who are working very hard in the state of Minnesota. They're not really getting ahead, and in this really strong economy, there are people that are doing very very well. And for me, I grew up in a working family, hard work should pay off. 
um, hard work should mean we can support our families. And I think when we come together around an agenda that is about us again, about Minnesota, and it's not sterilized and just message talking points, but instead about the real lives of Minnesotans, they come our way. That's how we have to do it. And yeah, there are a lot of forces that are trying to divide us. Um, and that's one way to win an election. Another way to, to win an election is to stand up for an honest, progressive vision and say, I'm going to take on the tough issues and not tiptoe away from them because we have some and we need to face them. All right. Now, before you go, I want to play a quick game. Obviously, you have a background in healthcare. Uh, and so, what I would like to do is name an issue in Minnesota and uh, I would like your prescription for how to address it. Um, so, you start out small, but also big, especially now potholes. Fill them. <laughs> All right. Um, racial inequality. Okay, already touched on that one, and that is uh, too serious an issue for a quick prescription. But we have to understand that we face structural racism in the state of Minnesota. We have implicit bias. We have to put that issue on the table and reckon with it and fix it. Woo! Right. <laughs> Snow in April. Whiskey. <laughs> I think a lot of people take the self-prescribed uh, Medicinal. Yeah. <laughs> Medicinal whiskey. Yeah. You were from Wisconsin. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Sweet stuff. <laughs> Housing prices. They're too hot. Right? Too, and, too and, too and too hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? It's too hot. Yeah. Right. Um, another uh, very important issue. Uh, pole bunion statues come to life and terrorizing our towns. I think we just need a lot of hot dish. <laughs> <laughs> scares them off. Uh, no, it, 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 it soothes Paul. Oh, okay. Let's smell the hot dish and just sit down instead of, wheel, instead of wielding his axe. Uh, hemorrhoids. I'm asking for a friend. I would like to talk about prevention. Check. Uh, public transportation. We should invest in it. And not just in the Twin Cities, but in greater Minnesota where people are aging and can't always drive to where they need to go. People need transit all across the state of Minnesota. All right. And uh, last and most importantly, Wisconsin. <laughs> Don't make me send Paul your way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching our YouTube video. Make sure you click subscribe to watch the best Minnesota-focused satire around.